Hey everybody, Dan Rubino here with Windows Central, and check it out, we got the Microsoft Lumia 950 XL in. Uh, if you pre-ordered yours, they are now arriving by UPS. We also heard that local stores have them available as well, so you may be able to go and pick one up. The next batch ships for December 11th, and uh, Microsoft has very tight uh, quantities of these, basically, so they're trying to keep their inventory tight. Uh, obviously, they don't want to have any leftover stock, so uh, you'll have to keep checking the website if you're going to try to order it that way. Uh, important thing to note, this is a dual SIM device. It's actually buried in the Microsoft website for this device, but a lot of us didn't even see it. They're definitely not advertising it, but it is dual SIM. And let's answer one question right away. If you're on Verizon, this device won't help you. Uh, we've already had people put in a Verizon SIM and say it does not work. We have one too, we'll give it a shot, but don't get your hopes up. So uh, this should work on AT&T and T-Mobile and of course other GSM carriers in the United States. We got the white version here. We also have the 950 we'll compare it to and the 1520, but let's get to the unboxing. Uh, pretty nice box overall, nice presentation. Uh, it is a rather larger box than usual, but the phone itself is pretty big. You can see right here, we got the device. Looks really good. I had to go for the white to black. I just find too boring. Now, if you're interested in those Mozo cases, we got those in too. So stay tuned later today as we're going to be unboxing those both for the 950 XL and the 950. Uh, we got a couple variants of those, so we'll take a look. Uh, here's a device. Uh, feels really good. It's a very thin device. My first impressions, uh, you know, I haven't held this since uh, early October, but um, you know, it's a really, really thin device. It's pretty crazy uh, how good it feels in the hand. Uh, in terms of actual size, it's definitely bigger, but this is definitely smaller than, well, I'll just show you the 1520. Uh, so you can see the 1520 there in comparison. We'll do some close-up shots of this as well. But um, 1520 is definitely a whole other beast in terms of size. Uh, that may not seem like a big difference, but it actually is, especially when you try to put it in your pocket. Uh, you can kind of see right there. In terms of height, uh, there you go. So, you know, 1520 for a lot of people was just too big. Uh, and I totally understand that, I, although I love the display on it, but when you want to put this in your pants, it's a little difficult. This seems to be the more ideal for a lot of people, to so be real curious. Same camera as the Lumia 950, although they look dramatically different. In fact, I would say the XL looks like a real serious camera, uh, but they're both exactly the same people. Uh, there's no hardware difference between the two. Why the difference? It's just aesthetics. There's no reason. Uh, they both have a little hump uh, to keep the camera off of the, uh, when you lay it flat. It's also so you give speaker clearance. Uh, but other than that, they're exactly the same camera. But obviously, I think this one looks a lot better. So that is a quick look at a device. Now, actually, let's go over here to the buttons. This is going to be one controversial area. And even I'm a little concerned about it is the button layout. So you have volume up power and volume down and that's obviously very different if you look at the 950 you can see it's a more traditional volume up down rocker and then the power button and the camera button um why did microsoft decide to split that off i can't tell you uh it's definitely different obviously there's some uh it makes a little bit of sense to have the power button right here in the middle of the device as you know it's probably where you're gonna be holding it and maybe they just thought it'd be better i don't know it definitely feels a little strange i think it's gonna be a little confusing but uh, maybe it's one of those things we can adapt to. Uh, dedicated camera button. Uh, there's your USB Type-C port in the bottom. Coming around to the top, you do have the headphone jack, which is actually in the center, which is actually kind of different from the 950, which puts it off to the side. Uh, so that's kind of a, a nice thing. Some people may prefer that, others may not. And then, of course, it's completely clean on that side. Uh, other than that, we're talking Gorilla Glass 4 for the 950 XL versus Gorilla Glass 3 for the 950 I've never used Gorilla Glass 4, um, so I can't really tell you if it's going to be any actual difference in, in terms of usability. I kind of doubt it, but uh, this should be a little bit thinner and stronger than uh, what's on a 950. So um, we'll give it a, a shot, though, and see if I notice any difference. Let's put that to the side and see what else we get. Of course, we get the instructions and all the uh, details about the device, uh, warranty information. Nothing else there. And then over here, we're going to have... It's very much like the Surface uh, boxing, by the way. So obviously they're carrying it over. This is kind of one of the reasons why this box is big. You can see you're getting both the USB Type-C standalone cable. So you can use this for your car or for you know traveling, wherever you want to plug into USB. Um, and then they do give you a separate dedicated uh, power outlet. So you can see this one does not disconnect. This is the same thing on the 950. Now, but this is still important because this is the fast charger. So this is what you're gonna to wanna to use basically uh, every night as it's going to rapidly charge a device. You can do about 50% in 30 minutes. 
uh, and it does work very well. So it's a pretty awesome thing, but you do need a high capacity a wall adapter for that and they obviously just give you the whole thing. But that is it in terms of the device itself. Uh, we're going to throw uh, the battery in there, which, well, it's actually already in there, but throw our sims in there and boot it up and we'll come back and give you a tour of the OS. Okay, we're back here. We've got the 950XL here in the center. You can see it kind of compared to 1520 and 950. Definitely right in the middle between the two. Um, now we have set up this device and uh, quickly before we get started, I know a lot of people love to see the inside of these things. So we're gonna peel off the cover. So there's a little notch here at the bottom and then you can peel off uh, and there is the Qi, and I believe there's actually PMA in this too, but not 100%, I don't use PMA ever. Definitely has Qi wireless charging though, as you would expect. There is the cool camera thing. Uh, the battery goes underneath part of the camera housing, which is really interesting. Uh, over here, we have SIM 2. Down here is SIM 1. And over here is the micro SD expansion. So definitely kind of a cool setup. Um, you can't see it now, but that is actually a Verizon SIM in there. And I'll show you what that looks like, which is basically nothing when it's on. And we have our at t SIM. And we are, of course, getting at t uh, LTE speeds as you would expect to. Uh, when the device is setting up for the first time, if you put your SIMs in there, it's basically going to ask you um, which SIM do you want to use as the primary data. Although you can have two SIMs on this device, like all Lumias and two dual SIM phones, you can't use dual data. So you're, you have to choose one SIM or the other, which one you want to have the data plan on. So if I had AT&T and T-Mobile in here, uh, they can both receive calls, they can both text message, uh, but they can't both pull down uh, dual LTE data. So, don't, you know, don't be under that impression. So I had to choose the first one uh, as at t and you can see I have the at t LTE uh, speeds there. Um, and then basically here you can see that second SIM is kind of crossed out. So that is the Verizon one. I'm not getting a single thing. I guess in theory, if this had band 13, which I don't believe it does, I could get a uh, Verizon LTE speeds, but uh, we're not even getting that. So uh, here is the default device. Uh, we did log in with our account and I did set the screen to Vivid just because I like that. If you haven't seen our previous video on how to do that, definitely go check it out. Uh, I prefer Vivid for AMOLED. But uh, you can see uh, the tiles are still pretty large, so they only give you the three rows here. You can, of course, go into settings and change that, and we already did that in another video. So I may do that with this device as I do find these tiles a little bit large, so I might make them four across and a little bit smaller. Uh, scrolling over here, let's take a look at the apps. So these are everything that's actually included in the device. And it's kind of interesting. So there is Candy Crush Saga, which is pre-installed. There's Expedia, which is pre-installed. And there's a few other ones here too, including Hill Climb Racing, which is really kind of strange. Uh, very popular game. I just wouldn't have thought it would be pre-installed here, but they have. Uh, there's also Netflix there. Um, let's see what else have we got. Quiz Up comes pre-installed. Of course, there's a Skype video in sports, which is always there. The Guardian is also on board and Uber. And that's pretty much it. Now, of course, if you don't like any of those apps, you can just basically uninstall them so you can hold down, hit uninstall, and it's going to remove the app. And unlike Android, this actually takes it off the device. It's not like in ROM somewhere. It's completely gone. So those aren't a big deal. Another question we're getting a lot of, and I don't have an immediate answer for, is, okay, if we don't have a SIM in that second slot, do you still get that little uh, crossbuster there? Um, basically saying there's no SIM. Uh, and can you make hide that basically? And as far as I know, no, you can't. Now, if people request enough of it from Microsoft or maybe they have a plan to be able to hide that, but there is no way to make this basically a single SIM device. So some people are gonna find that a little bit of an eye irritation. I totally understand it, but as far as I know, there's no way to totally fix that. Uh, other than that though, uh, and we did do the app updates on this device. So I think there was about 39 mandatory app updates that you want to do. And that was a good time to test how warm it got. So as you may or may not know, the 950XL runs a Snapdragon 810 processor, 2.0 gigahertz, as compared to the 950, which runs a Snapdragon 808 at 1.8 gigahertz. So you're basically getting slightly faster processor with two more cores on board. So this is octa-core, this is hexa-core. Um, and because of that, this has water cooling. So there's a, or I should say liquid cooling. There's a pipe that runs down the side of it, takes away some of the heat. Um, there's been a lot of concern over the 810, whether or not it actually gets really hot or not. So while installing 39 apps or whatever over high speed uh, Wi-Fi, it was a good time to test that basically, you know, how hot it got. And I can say it got warm, but it felt exactly like the 950 did. That is, it feels 
nicely warm on the back, but never was hot. It was never really uncomfortable. Um, there was no concentrated spot where it was really hot. Unlike the 1520, which if you have, uh, were part of the Insider program, you may have noticed sometimes the processor, I believe is up in this corner or this corner, it get really hot in that one area. Um, that is not the case here. So we'll do some uh, FLIR testing with this too. We actually have a FLIR camera and test it later, but um, I don't think it actually got hot. It, it gets a little bit warm, but nothing more than what I experienced on a 950. Other than that though, the device itself looks really good. Like I said, it's got a 3400 milliamp battery, exact same camera as a 20 megapixel camera with an F19 aperture. You do have four uh, HAAC microphones for recording uh, the excellent uh, audio quality of, say, if you go to a rock concert, uh, it basically moves the highs, and it actually sounds really, really good on there. Uh, you do have Qi wireless charging, micro SD expansion, uh, all sorts of great stuff on this device. Uh, display looks really good, too. You are still talking about a QHD display, so it's the same display resolution as available on the 950, uh, but being is it's a little bit a uh, larger screen, 5.7 inch versus 5.2. On this device, the PPI is gonna be slightly less, although you can make an argument, you probably won't notice it anyway. Uh, I think that both displays look really good. A uh, very thin bezel on it too. We'll be playing around with this device over the next few days. I'm really curious about how this performs on Continuum. I think in terms of processor speeds, you're not going to really notice it day to day. I, I really be surprised if I see this device as being much faster than this one. But I think when it comes to Continuum, where you're pushing a lot of data onto a larger display, I think those extra cores and that slightly faster processor may feel a little bit smoother than compared to the 950. And that may be why they're bundling the uh, display dock with this uh, device. So, but there you go, head to Windows Central, check out our tips section we have for the 950 and 950XL. They're both basically the same in terms of uh, specs and um, as far as things you can do to uh, optimize things. But there you go, let us know what you think. And if you're going to pick one up, take care everybody.